Aha. That was a while <laughs> since we played an improv like that. Yeah. What were you thinking about during that? Well, we've been kind of doing all these duo videos here today and, and moving through these different levels of beginner and intermediate and advanced. And I was thinking about kind of starting in a very gentle, open place and then allowing the structure to kind of present itself. It's, it's sort of, I find it's like a great story. A great story yeah. reveals itself like at the right moment the characters walk into the frame or onto the stage. For sure. And uh, how about you? Well, yeah, I think about that story analogy a lot. It's like uh, sometimes I'll say to a student, uh, a young student, you know, uh, they, they might be able to retell a story that they know really well, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears or something. But uh, I'll say to them sometimes, make a, tell me the story about a, a giraffe and a mouse and an elephant. And I'll just make, a, there, there is no real story I'm referring to. And um, older people will tend to say, well, wh 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 which story is that? But a, a young child often will just start making it up. So um, in my experience of playing a saxophone and learning how to improvise, letting things unfold, it's a little bit like just having the faith that, that something's mm -hmm. going to... Uh, uh, you know, happen, whatever happens, it happened, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and sort of taking away my fear of whether it's good or bad or not, and taking away that voice of judgment, uh, you know, and remembering in the process of learning to do this, I can remember what it feels like to be a pretty young child and just have an imagination that can just turn on and improvise. So uh, that's, that's what I was thinking about in, in that piece. I, there were so many things. I would say we were playing at probably an advanced level for the most of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that a lot of the, the skill and the technique that we had in our fingers comes just from hours of practicing. But, but still, the breath was the thing that, that really impressed me the most. You know, how, uh, how our breaths, if you could actually have a, 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 have a, a draw a picture of how our breathing patterns, not instead of the notes and the rhythm, mm -hmm. but just show a phrase mark. Now you took, I think we both took a big long breath at first and then maybe another long breath. We often have done that together because mm -hmm. it's a great way to build a, a feeling of trust with, with your partner. And then, uh, and then sometimes he would start the breath and then I, w I remember doing a few shorter breaths, a pattern to build up some, to build up to a, a, a peak, you know, yeah. so he would go, uh, and play a long note, and I would come on with a da 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 da, and that's a trick I use a lot when uh, I want to build to a climax, and and I feel like I, I have something to say in the story, and I want to take it to a, a more dramatic level. Mm -hmm. So building up with a few short breaths like that gets your lungs really full, so that you can then wail on a high note, or or get louder, or get lower. Whatever you want to do, so breathing is always key, even up to the inter uh, advanced levels. You always want to have a sense of varying your breath so that the story will be varied too.